Hello everyone and welcome to a new series we're going to be running on the channel. Uh, this is Gloomhaven. Um, if you don't know what Gloomhaven is, it started life as an incredibly large and progressive tabletop game. Um, it's, uh, I, I guess what you'd call a generational game in the sense that as you play the game, you gradually change the, the rules and the scenarios uh, that you're in. You have a, a party of adventurers who go out to do various missions and uh, throughout the course of completing those missions uh, gradually improve uh, a place called Gloomhaven, uh, either improving its prosperity or uh, improving your own character's equipment. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on with that. And it's just hit its 1.0 release, which is the equivalent of that tabletop game. Uh, we're going to be running through the campaign mode uh, and trying to play things as uh, as the game gives them to us. It is very hard. We are going to die and lose a lot, but it is incredibly fun. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, we're going to have it on normal difficulty level. We don't want to, to drop difficulty down because part of the fun of the game is the challenge that comes with it. Uh, we need a guild name. That's going to be uh, Big Damn Heroes. And we're going to have it so that each mercenary manages an individual amount of gold. Now, if you're playing the tabletop version, normally you would pick one character and you would run through with that character while the other players around the table uh, would run with theirs. Because it's just me, um, we're going to be basically running all the characters ourselves. So we'll have to pick and choose who we're sending in on which mission when. Welcome to the harsh lands of Gloomhaven, recruit. You think you have what it takes to become a mercenary out there on the edge of the world? We are paid to venture into the darkest forests of the region and to step into ancient crypts with the unmistakable stench of death and rotting flesh. Mmm, lovely places to earn a name for yourself. Be ready to face cutthroats, undead, fearsome tribes, and dreadful demons from other realms. You didn't find yourself as a mercenary without knowing how to crack a few skulls, did you? Well, maybe. Uh, before going into the harrowing wilderness surrounding Gloomhaven, you need at least two mercenaries in your party, brave or greedy enough to seek out adventures in exchange for gold. Okay, on the left we've got the party panel. So we can take up to four in. Uh, I'll be mostly doing parties of two, I think. Um, the more characters you take in, the harder the encounters get. It's self-balancing in that way. Um, so we're going to get ourselves a new mercenary. And we're going to start off. Oh, we've only got six uh, different classes available. We've got the Brute. Uh, we've got the Tinkerer. We've got the Scoundrel. We've got the Cragheart. We've got the Spellweaver and the Mind Thief. I'm going to start off with the Scoundrel. And you're going to be Alana. When we create someone, we need to give them a reason to exist. This is what they're going to be um, uh, finally moving towards. When we hit one of these goals, um, the character will retire. We can then create a new one, but this character will no longer be playable. Whatever we've uh, geared them up doing, uh, however they've progressed or uh, enhanced themselves, uh, they will no longer be around. Uh, we'll get unlocks for doing that. So the town of Gloomhaven will get prosperity and it looks like we'll unlock... I have no idea what a saw is. I have no idea what music is. Well, we will we'll figure that out. So 15 perk points from completing battle goals. That's an interesting one. So battle goals, uh, every time you do a mission, you have a battle goal that you can pick. And then if you collect that, then you get one or two perk points from it. So this could happen quite quickly. This could also happen quite quickly. Experience your party members becoming exhausted 15 times. I think we'll go with the study of anatomy. That's the personal quest. So there we go. Alana is on the team. Uh, we also need more mercenaries, so let's uh, let's get 
Let's get Mind Thief rolled up. I don't know if we'll take them in straight away because they're quite a difficult character to play. Um, it could be Scarlax. That's a good name for you. Take back the trees. Complete three scenarios in the Dagger Forest. Hmm. Or complete six site scenarios. Um, yeah, we'll go for the... Oh, so the, these things might be um, specific class unlocks, actually. So Scarlax has joined the party. Uh, I think we're going to make some some other mercenaries as well, just so we've got the selection available. Oh, it wants us to go back to the world map. And um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take us through each of the the various bits. Uh, now we've got two mercenaries. We've got thirty gold each. We're gonna want to buy some things. Uh, I'm gonna start off with a heater shield for you and an iron helmet. So we're going for mostly defensive items here, uh, just because they'll help to keep us alive. And for Skarlax, what are we gonna do with you? I think we're going to do similar actually. Heat shield and an iron helmet. I I think they're they're pretty good in terms of items for survivability. Whether we're going to keep them forever, I don't know. Uh, you can always sell them back. Um, and also, if we find any items in the dungeon, uh, then we can we can carry that through. Uh, so it now says uh, we could go and equip them. I've already gone and done that. Uh, if we want, we can also pop in there. Uh, Gloomhaven uh, allows us to participate in city encounters. Well worth it if we're in the city. Uh, city encounters are good. And if a quest is hard, we can donate money to the Temple of the Great Oak and get some blessings. Blessings uh, improve our decks. And I'll explain our decks very quickly. Uh, if I go just over... Right, no, that's not where I want to see it. It's this one, right. Uh, if we attack, then we draw a card from this deck. Um, there's one of these, one of these, one, two, three, four, five of these, uh, and so on and so forth. Blessings add extra times two things for one scenario. So they're, they're really quite good, but it doesn't remove any of the old things. As we level up and improve our perks, uh, we can get different things, such as removing two minus one cards or replacing plus ones with plus twos or just getting rid of that minus two there, there's a whole bunch of different things uh, that we could do and the different characters have got different uh additions that can happen uh let's uh let's get some other characters let's get a brute uh we're not going to take him on the mission but it'll be good to have him around uh we will call you pause at Become exhausted 12 times. That's likely to happen. Complete four boss scenarios. Let's, let's go for the aim to run out of cards. Uh, where it says um, uh, about getting exhausted, uh, each person has a certain number of cards. Throughout the course of the campaign, we'll be using these up and then gradually burning them. If you run out of cards completely, you're exhausted and you collapse to the ground. Can we deselect? Yes, we can deselect. Let's get another new mercenary. So, uh, Tinkerer. We we'll call him Gator. Uh, elemental samples. Complete a scenario in Gloomhaven, Dagger Forest. Okay, one of everywhere. Or we'll kill 20 bandits or cultists. That's pretty cool. We'll go for Lawbringer. And still got two more to go so the spell weaver lots and lots of heavy damage um we will call you Sindar. i think we'll go for the secret of youth three crypt scenarios we've already got um a lightning unlock available to us
And finally, the Crackheart. Giant hulking rock monster. He's pretty cool. I might actually take him out on the first mission. Uh, we'll call him uh, Blundar. Nice, simple name. Trophy hunt. Kill 20 different types of monster. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Okay, so we will leave Skarlax behind. Blunder, we need you to go shopping, actually. Now, the Iron Helmet's actually been bought already. I don't... I wonder, can we... Can we give that back? So if I de-equip this... Does it become available over here? No. Okay, that's that's good to know. Yeah, bound to Scarlax. Okay, that's fine. Well, you may as well use them seeing as you have them. In that case, we'll look at Blunder and decide what he could get. Now, he is a bit of a ranged unit and he's a bit of a tanky unit. So I'd like stuff that's going to enhance that ability, I'd say. Let's... Uh, Let's actually put him up here. Much better. And in on the merchant. So, hide armor is quite good. Makes it a bit harder for him to attack. Leather armor is, a, is actually good enough that we could just use it. Attack against disadvantage on the attack. And it resets. So, it's a... It's a worthwhile thing. We'll do that. And with 10 left, maybe a stamina potion. Or healing, because we're going to... We're going to get injured. A uh, small item, a healing potion. We use it once per adventure. And the leather armor goes there. Okay, let's, let's get our city encounter. You awake in the middle of the night to the sound of alarms ringing in the west. You recognise them as the warning clangs of an attack on the wall. Any force bold enough to assault the defences of Gloomhaven can't be good. For a moment, you're grateful for the prolific number of guards defending the city, but still, there's always the possibility that the guards may not be enough. We could steal some valuables, or we could go and defend the city. I'm in it for the long haul, so we're going to go and help the city. You rush towards the west gate, eager to fight back the invaders. As you approach, you see a mass of vermlings climbing over the wall and attacking the guards with daggers and arrows. You yell and charge into battle. It's a rough fight, but you emerge victorious, covered in fur and blood. The citizens of Gloomhaven remain safe, and the town is free to grow and prosper. We get some XP and some prosperity. So improving the prosperity will make more things available to buy. I don't know precisely how high up the prosperity chart we need to be for that to happen, but can we click into Gloomhaven and find out? Doesn't look like we can immediately see it here. There, I'm sure there will be somewhere that we can, we can find that out. Anyway, the Black Barrow, this is our first quest. So now might be a good time to go through the most ability cards in the inventory. Uh, with the ability cards, we can actually swap out ones that we don't want for some of these, but we are limited to the fixed number for the character. Okay, it's Sinister Opportunity is slow, but quite good. Trix's reversal is good for getting through shields and good for defending against damage. So we might take that instead of quick hands. Oh, I do like the swift bow. Three attack at four range is, is pretty huge. But we'll, we'll leave it at that. As for Blunder, I don't know blunders cards enough to say what's going to be Ooh. 
Forceful Storm burns the card when it's done. Uh, the little symbol here means it's a one use if we use that ability. Uh, each card has got two abilities, one attack and one move. We'll pick two cards and we'll pick one of the attack abilities and one of the move abilities uh, each time we do an action. Mm, nature's Lift is a good healing thing. But you know, I think I think we're fine with our regular cards for now. Let's let's just go in and see how badly this is going to go. Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in a sleeping lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods. Well, seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents, says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him. Just bring back what is mine. Based on Jaxera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. All right, we're on our way. We might get an encounter on the way. It looks like we have, actually. There was heavy rain last night, and the roads are now dark streaks of mud. And as bad as it is for walking, you see the others up ahead on the road are having worse trouble. You come upon a collection of wagons stuck in the mud on the side of the road. You look around and see an odd assortment of people dressed in garish clothing. They're working to push their brightly painted wagons all emblazoned with marvellous and magical techno circus logo out of the muck. We just stopped for a quick meal and now the wheels have sunk in this mess. A quattro with a fancy top hat says as you approach, I'm sure our strongman will get us out eventually, but we certainly wouldn't begrudge a little extra help. Ooh, uh, the ringmaster or the fortune? Let's do the fortune teller. Oh no. You take pity on an old orchid woman trying to extricate her fortune teller's wagon by herself. You help her get it back on the road and she grabs you and looks deep in your eyes. Your path is dark and cursed. There's a shadow around you, a gloom. You must leave this place. Be rid of it before it consumes you. We get some XP, which is nice, uh, but we've been cursed. And I've never been cursed before, so we'll have to find out what that does. If that makes us attack with disadvantage, to find. we'll be in trouble. A short journey past the new market gate, and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood, looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here, you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. I guess we're going in then. Okay, so... Um... As I mentioned before, before each battle, uh, we will get a specific battle goal uh, and that will give us a perk point if we succeed it. Uh, so, die hard, never allow your current hit points to drop below half your maximum, that's not going to happen. Um, Explorer, reveal a room tile by opening a door on your turn, that's going to happen, so we'll take that one. Loot a chest, mm, not likely, be the first to kill a monster, possibly. So we've each got a battle goal. We just have to remember. Take care of these unfortunates, your target says. 
backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Jokes on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. Okay, so we'll be picking two cards uh, each round, as I mentioned. Those will gradually become spent. When we've run out of them, we either need to do a long rest or a short rest uh, to recover them. A short rest, we end up burning a card at random, get them all back. A long rest, we wait the entire turn. We can pick a card. We heal two hit points as well. And uh, then, um, then we get things back on the next turn. In this initial deployment phase, uh, I think what we're going to want to do is let's get the crack heart first. He's got some nice area of effect um, things like dirt tornado. So this does one damage to everything in that area. Um, and it will cause muddle on the enemies. But we want that to go first if we're going to do it. And I want something else that's going to be useful for the second second ability. We could get Opposing Strike. So uh, whichever card we pick first will give us our time, which is our initiative. Um, once we've picked and uh, uh, we've had our Scoundrel pick, uh, the enemies will pick as well. And then it works out in turn order. So if we want to go quickly... Uh, we have to pick a low thing first of all. I th think... Move up to two. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Rumbling av advance is a good start. And then if we did Dirt Tornado after... We don't have to do them in the order that we've picked. Um, this has given us a speed of 29. So what I would be looking to do is do the Dirt Tornado and the, uh, the Rumbling Advance. Uh, so the Dirt Tornado attack move and the Rumbling Advance um, move move. I think that's, that's pretty good. So really we'd want you to be going after 29. So we could go single out. As one. And then that's it's got two useful things on either side. We'd really only want to be doing the top one though. So we need a decent move thing. And smoke bomb's a good option for being able to move things around. So yeah, let's let's go for those. And these guys are going to be 35 and 35. So that's that's actually all right for us. They're going to move a little bit and then they're going to attack. But we're going to move first. So we'll get the dirt tornado over here on you. A little bit of damage on one of them, but more importantly, it's muddled them. So every time they attack, they will get a disadvantage. Um, and now we can move in and do extra damage as well. Okay, I like it. Youch. Did some damage. Uh, we'll just take that damage on the chin. Okay, that's that's worked all right for us. 
if we pull this guy down here, uh, we can get a decent attack on him as well. Or we could pull... Well, we can only pull two distance. So, yeah. It's a bit of a shame we're not a little bit closer, but there was no way to really do that. Let's just get the damage on him. Oh, really unlucky. And he's got shield, so he takes even less damage. Okay, uh, we really want to be upping our damage on him. Uh, Thief Snack will allow us to attack, which is great. And Flanking Strike will allow us to attack as well. Let's do... Let's do Thief Snack and Flanking Strike that way round. So I want you to go ever so slightly faster. So you're going to have to do Unstable Upheaval. Target all adjacent enemies. Are you okay? Yeah, we can work with that. Uh, so that's our attack move. What's our move move going to be? We could do something to heal ourselves. Oh, we could do Opposing Strike. That will give us Retaliate. Retaliate is amazing. Double checking each of these to see if there's, there's anything that's just spot on this is the right thing that we want mobilizing enemies no i'm trying not to burn cards this early on is is really what i'm looking at you don't have to use the actual ability ability you can always just use the um the move action itself so i think backup ammunition might be the best option Or Earth and Clod to heal ourselves. Alright, we'll go with Earth and Clod. Because we have taken three damage. So these guys are going to move quickly this time. Uh, shield and Retaliate, which is annoying. Uh, so, in the previous turn, we created... Um, this uh, this element, uh, leaf, uh, this earth element, uh, it was over here. We are using it up uh, in order to get an extra ability. Some abilities create them, some of them use them. Uh, when they create it, they sit around for a while. Uh, then the next turn, they become usable, and then after that, they vanish. Uh, so let's confirm this for the damage. So you're almost gone, which is great. And there was no allies close enough, so the uh, extra bit didn't do anything. And over here, yeah, just heal yourself. Now, these enemies aren't going to actually attack us, uh, which is really nice. Uh, they're just going to shield and retaliate, but we... We don't want to get hit by that retaliate. And the more time we spend in here fighting these guys, the, the less likely it is we're going to get all the way through to the end. Alright, so yeah, they've got Retaliate 2 and Shield. That's, that's not good. Uh, we could... Alright, let's... For the moment... We can move on up and take a swing at this guy. We could move on to the door and open it, but that will trigger the next mobs in the next room. And I don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to use the attack ability and we're going to go after this guy. 
just to get him finished off. It means that the Crankheart's not the first to kill someone, but there's fewer things that are going to be attacking us. And because we killed him, we didn't get the retaliate damage, so I think it was it was worthwhile. Okay, if we... We could do Trixie's Reversal and Throwing Knives. So, suffer no damage and have a ranged attack, which is alright. Venom Shift could potentially kill this guy right next to us. Actually, yeah, let's backstab a Venom Ship for you. And over here, I want to get something clomping up on this guy. Attack 3, range 3, Crater is an amazing skill. And then we need just some regular movement. Okay, let's go crater and backup ammo. Ooh, they are moving really slowly. Okay, this is good for us. Uh, so, over here... It's not quite enough to kill him, which is a bit of a shame. We could open the door. And that will get things in the next room coming through. Or we can step over here. They're going to move one and attack four. Yeah, so we want to be out of range when they're done. And you're going to move two and attack three, but that's less of a problem. Get a big attack on this guy. It's pretty solid. He's going to move one. So if we back up this way, he can't actually reach anyone. Ow. Uh, so rather than taking four damage, we can always just burn a card. Of four damage is a lot to take. I think we're fine to do it at the moment because we do have a healing potion, but that's that's really painful. Uh, we're going to get throwing knives. That will allow us to attack both of these. And... Ooh, special mixture. So if we do throwing at point blank range, it's going to be really hard on us. Um, but we'll do it this way round, uh, and we'll use the special mixture to move through the door, and maybe we'll reach something else next turn. So you're going to die. You're going to be a bit injured, but not massively dead. So I'd like to get next to you and hit you with something big. Oh, we could throw a massive boulder. That will work. Yeah, okay, let's get opposing strike and massive boulder. We're still going to move before these guys. Interesting. Okay, well, here's the two targets for the throwing knives. Oh, now we roll high damage. Really high damage, look at that. And then move one through here. up here and poison this guy. Now this is dangerous to do when we're 
coming in because these guys are going to wake up. They're going to act. And the Archer Elite... Oh, attack four, range six. He's, he's going to shoot us straight away. Uh, so, Cragheart. I kind of want to get the Retaliate on and get him charging in. But let's take you out first. We'll get the Retaliate going. So this card is now burned. Uh, we're not going to be able to use that again. And we'll need to move in next turn. This is going to be painful. Oh. Uh, use the shield. Receive only two damage instead. We'll take two damage. And we'll take two damage there. Uh, I think we're going to have to do a short rest. Because we're in a bit of trouble here. I right, wants to get rid of our throwing knives. Sure. We could take one damage in order to, to redraw it, but we'll just have to take it as it is. Uh, if we're going to heal ourselves, what do we have that can heal? Do we have anything that can heal? Uh, special mixture. So that'll, that'll do a little bit for us. Uh, special mixture is the top thing, so we'd need something on the bottom that could be useful. Trix's reversal? Yeah. And special mixture. Over here... Avalanche would be great if we can get next to the guy. I think we're only going to be able to move two, though. Yeah. Fine, we'll just have to to do it as it is. So, if we're not going to be able to attack things next to us... None of the abilities are really going to work for us. So we'll pick the one that's least useful. We'll go Rock Tunnel and Avalanche. Okay, so over here we were going to heal up. And protect ourselves. Cragheart, you're gonna come on in. For what it's worth. Skip the attack. Can't do anything. Ow! Trixus reversal. Definitely take no damage on that. We're lucky he had nothing left over. That's a lot of damage. I'm going to burn one available card. Uh, we will get rid of... single out I think to protect ourselves uh, and so this is the uh, the ability so the discards um, we can get back with the resting uh, the burned ones we can't and we've got at least another room over here that we need to sort out so we need to move quite quickly to get damage on these guys
Yeah, if we go Flanking Strike and Thief Snack, that's a good combination for a lot of damage. That'll be moving really quickly. I would like to get the Cragheart in, but Cragheart's going to have to rest, and I think it's going to have to be a short rest. Uh, we're losing Avalanche. Oh, Avalanche is a good one, but it has to go. It has to go. So it's 23 is the slowest we can move. Cragheart's never going to really be better than that. So Flanking Strike is just attack 3. Is it worth us using Flanking Strike? No, we can use Venom Shiv. Deselect that, please. There we go. The selection's are a little weird at times um, because it tries to work through um, what's actually going on there. Uh, so... Really, I would like these guys to be attacking with disadvantage. I'd also like them to be attacking Cragheart. But what could I do with this? Actually, can we can we get him to move? Move five, jump, immobilize all targets, move through. Immo yeah, immobilize isn't great for what we want. Move to all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. That's all right, just just in terms of like getting extra damage on them. Crater's got a push ability. If we can generate an earth, yeah, if we do rumbling advance and then crater. We can push a guy back, so we could we could get to here and like push this guy onto that trap, maybe. That could be interesting. That's a bit of damage, I'll just take it on the chin. Uh, if we're going to go for this guy, he's already poisoned, so I think you're the better choice. So we get poison on him. Nice. Uh, we'll attack this guy. So the two of them are quite hurt now. If I move up here. Oh, I thought he might take more damage because of the poison. That's alright, we'll attack this guy anyway. Lovely. We are thinning them out. You know, now's a good time to heal up the crack heart. Take the damage. I'll take the damage on the chin. Okay. Pull has got a range of three. So really we want to be where he is in order to use it. I think we're just going to end up doing a regular attack. Move forwards one and do a regular attack. I think that's all we can do. So we'll go quickly with it. We're going to have to rest after this anyway. Over here. What have we got that's a decent range? Earth and Clod. Oh, we want to muddle that guy at the end. So Dirt Tornado is where the real fun is. And then this to move. All right, let's, let's see how this works. We're going to go just before him, but not before the Elite. So 
so oh actually we can we can make it all the way up to this guy and then attack him for five it would burn a card but that would be a lot of damage on him what's he gonna do he's gonna attack three with range five yeah let's let's go for it get right in there I've done the wrong one I should have done this one Still a lot of damage. Is he going to kill himself on the crack heart? Oh no, he's just backed up. Ow. Okay, we're going to have to burn smoke bomb. So we're going to have to do a long rest next turn. Uh, no two ways around it. Uh, Dirt Tornado can get this guy killed or we can attack him directly and do some movement. I think we'll do that. Biff! Uh, so, long rest. And over here, Earthen Clod to try and heal him a bit, and Massive Boulder to try and finish him off. Let's hope he moves slow. He was moving slow. Okay, well, we'll do the, the heal. Uh, ooh. Yeah, we'll do the heal first. Oh, he's not in range. Should have used that to move. Can we undo? No, we can't. It would do one damage to him, but it would do one damage to us. So there's just no point. This is going to hurt. Uh, receiving three damage will uh, drop us out completely, so instead we will get rid of Venom Shiv and Backstab. In fact, Venom Shiv and... Yeah, and Backstab. So we get to recover our cards, uh, we get to recover our Heater Shield as well. And I think we'll get rid of Thief Snack. No, we need Thief Snack to get rid of one of the traps. Let's get rid of Flanking Strike. So our scoundrel is nearly exhausted. It's a it's a shame, but that's that's what it is. We're gonna have to move. So use that for the move and use that for the disarm. Uh, if we step on a trap, it does three damage, so we just don't want to do that. And I think we're going to have to short rest over here so that we can get a ranged attack. Attack 2, range 5 could be good enough. Attack 3, range 3 is better, but we'd need to move first. Yeah, let's do Rumbling Advance and Crater. Okay, so... We need to step in and do the disarm. We could step up and kill this guy, but then we'll still have the trap as a problem. Uh, no. 
Not the movement. Disarm. That's what I want. It gives experience for the scoundrel, so we are still getting stuff even if we don't succeed in this scenario. Uh, we'll actually just use a regular move instead of that. Oh, we... The curse! The curse came up. That is... That is frustrating. Uh, you're going to have to short rest if you're going to do anything. Sure, burn that. So you can still do something. Uh, but it's really not going to be much. Move three poison an enemy. And then attack him. Yeah. So the crack heart is going to go in the other room. Yeah, and if we're going to go in the other room, we can do it slowly. So if we dirt tornado in there. I want something that's going to move a little bit further. Uh, three. Yeah, three's fine. One, two, three. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, scoundrel, you've got one job. There's the poison. In fact, we just do this as a regular attack because he doesn't have any shield. We don't need to burn it. Ah, oh, times two damage. Very nice. Uh, but the scoundrel is going to be exhausted now. There's no way for him to get his stuff back. So we're going to move three. Get this door open. Kicking through the door, you find yourself face to face with the reason these bandits chose this particular hole to nest in. Animate bones. Unholy abominations of necromantic power. Nothing more to do but lay them to rest, along with the remainder of this troublesome rabble. It's unlikely we're going to get all of these done. Um, wow, they really want to, to do stuff. Uh, we do still have retaliation. Um... So, trying to get muddle on these guys. And a bit of damage as well. I oh, didn't actually make it close enough. Oh, and he heals! Wow, that was, that was so worthwhile. Take the damage. Ow! Burn one available card. What are we going to burn? Burn Crushing Grasp. Alright. Um, we've not got much left. We're going to have to do a long rest and hope we survive the turn. In fact, we're not going to survive the turn because doing a long rest will get rid of that. Over here... That is a ranged attack. We could use this to move through and open the chest at the back. One, two, three, four, five. Not quite. But it's still worth us using that. Okay, let's let's try something crazy. Those living bones just keep healing, don't they? Is 
Take the two damage. No damage to me, two damage on him because of the retaliate, but he's going to heal up. Such a shame. Okay, so move five. One, two, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, because this is a jump. Can we just go, we can just go straight. Because we definitely want to get that. Um, and attack this guy. Underwater Lagoon unlocked. Now we're not really going to be able to go there because it's going to be way more dangerous than this place. And we're not even in a place to... To get through this place. Uh, burn Trickster's reversal. It doesn't matter. We're still going to be exhausted. Uh, you're going to have to do a long rest. And you're probably not going to make it through. I'll do a short rest. Mm, no. I want that healing. Short. Burn back up ammunition. So rumbling advance for the healing. And Crater. Let's try some big damage. This is fine. No attacking. Or is it going to attack just with intrinsic damage? Yeah, it's just attacking with intrinsic damage. But the retaliation on themselves is is great. Uh, heal up. Maybe I should have done attack actually. Uh, so we're going to start off by damaging these with a stamp. Then we're going to move to here. And then we're going to do another stamp. Yeah, take the damage. Archery at close range never works for you. Let's try Earthen Clod and Dirt Tornado. We're going before the bones, that's the important thing. Ow, take the damage. Take the damage. So, Dirt Tornado, we're going to go here. It should hit both of these guys. We want to make sure we're doing the damage on them. And we did no damage at all. Oh, that is... That is painful. Heal up. That might have lost it for us. Attacking with disadvantage is such a huge disadvantage. Well, at least that guy's killed himself. Got to do a short rest. I don't think we really have a choice. We're really hoping that this is going to work, but we're just going to run out of cards, I can tell. If we don't run out of health first.
So yeah, we're not going to roll enough damage for this guy. <laughs> Especially if we get another time zero. Being cursed has uh, has disadvantaged us. We've only had the curse come up once, but statistically it ends up so much more common just by having it in the deck. And uh, it doesn't matter which we go for, so we'll do a short rest. We are exhausted. Well... Failed both of our scenarios, but we did manage to get a fair amount of experience at least. And we opened up the treasure chest, so it's not a complete loss. There will be a lot of um, failure in this. Uh, so don't expect it to be a, a perfect run through by any stretch at all. Um, that being said, it is going to be a lot of fun and this is going to remain here until we actually get through it. There'll be other uh, things like city encounters that gradually get us more powerful. We'll be able to get other items that will help us out and I'll be better at managing my cards as well. Um, but that's all going to be for next time because I'm afraid we're out of time for today. Thank you very much for coming along everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed this. As always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for some more Gloomhaven. See you soon.